Hello, I found some of these Headplay FPV goggles on sale a while ago so I thought I'd get some to try out because the price was fairly reasonable for what they are and if you've been following the FPV scene recently you might look at the Headplay name and think oh yeah Headplay I know those those are the really large screen uh, single screen goggles kind of like the Quantum goggles but um, larger and yes that is kind of correct um, because the company that makes those so that's that's what I was just mentioning here the large uh, single screen one came out last year I think um, but that's not actually the one that I have here um, so this one is called the Headplay HD and the one that I've bought is called Headplay PCS for personal um, oh, what is it? <laughs> Okay. Personal Cinema System uh, is what PCS stands for and they look like this so this is a product that was originally made and marketed about nine years or so ago and it was not made for FPV because FPV wasn't really much around then as far as I, as far as I know um, and this was made for just watching movies or playing computer games so you'd just be sitting in a chair at home or sitting on the sofa in your living room so a lot of the um, design of it was not really suitable for walking around in a field outside in bright sunlight so <clears throat> what they've done here is um, they've sort of revitalized this product with some extra little add-on bits that you can get for it such as um, so instead of having the oh where did it go yeah so originally they sold it like this it was kind of a, a hat with a brim and you st stuck the goggles on the front there which is fine if you're sitting in a, in a room and that's kind of maybe dark already but if you're outside you want might want something that sticks on a little better and keeps the Sun out so this kit that I have bought here have include includes in it this ski mask conversion thingy and a few other useful features like they have also included this plastic case which you can place around the outside and it includes some mounting pieces here so that the plugs can't be pulled out inadvertently which would cause you to crash of course um, so we'll have a look at it all in a minute but this is just what um, is on the website um, one of the slight down points of this is that because these things have been in storage for so long the paint that they used on this box unit and also on the goggles uh, case here as well has gone all sticky so <laughs> that's a little bit unfortunate but they do mention that in here somewhere um, and so if you look at one of these videos here is a YouTube video showing you all of the steps you need to put this together um, and clean all the icky paint off um, so as people here mostly seems to be positive reviews um, the first couple are not so great but the rest are pretty good and I also looked at this thread on RC groups which um, this is actually what sort of tipped me in favor of buying it actually because a lot of people here said that the picture is very very good so <clears throat> given that the price is not super high at least compared to other goggles that you um, would need to buy to get this kind of picture quality uh, so it's 99 bucks I actually had to pay $37 of shipping which is kind of sucks but um, it got here pretty quickly um, so com yeah compared to fat sharks it's a lot cheaper and the picture quality is pretty good but the down points are of course you've got to clean it up and the other big down point is that you've got to have this big block this brick thing stuck on you somewhere uh, if you want to walk around at least you're going to have to have that clipped onto your belt or something so that is a bit of a bummer and the other bummer is that you yeah you, you just can't get rid of that brick which is a bummer um, anyway so let's have a bit of a look at it the box that it arrived in came with all these little white polystyrene packing thingies in it so I got all those out of there the quickest way I could think of 
And this is the um, main um, container. And most of what's in here would have been what was in the original kit without the FPV stuff. I have the FPV stuff just to the side here. We'll look at it in a minute. I think these are add-ons that came afterwards. Hold on. Yeah. So I think this is what would have come in the original kit. Um, there is a power adapter, which is, fortunately, this is from, it goes from 100 to 240 volts. So you'll be okay with using that wherever you are in the world, I would think. Oh, God, come on, focus. What's going on here? There we go. There you go. So this is um, outputting 12 volts, obviously. And comes with one of these little clip things I found. So you can perhaps replace that with a more convenient plug for your location. And where I am in New Zealand, I need to use one of these. So I'll just plug that in there and um, should be fine. <clears throat> Um, the plug on the other side is kind of a small one, so if you have been using the um, more typical plugs that you have on FPV gear, this is probably not going to fit it, unfortunately. And also I noticed up here this foam would be quite good to pull out and repurpose for, um, I don't know, little camera mounts or something. It's very light and very firm, so it'd be good to cut almost like balsa wood, you could cut it up and um, use it to mount your camera or something on your quadcopter. Anyway, uh, and here we have the goggles themselves, and this is where we start to get into the stickiness, I think. You can see, you can actually see on there, it's quite, um, that piece there at least is quite sticky feeling. Yeah, so I'm trying to try not to touch that too much at the moment. Um, the lenses have how can we look at this? Lenses have a nice bit of piece of um, protective film on there, so hopefully they're not going to be um, too dirty or anything. Um, and on the bottom we have some nice adjustments for interpupillary distance and also for focus, I presume. So you can adjust each of those individually. Sorry about the camera not focusing, I'm not sure what's going on today. All right. Um, and this can presumably be detached from there fairly easily, I presume. Not sure how to get that off just at the moment. Um, and up on top here we have a sort of a fake leather, I think it's fake leather, presumably, yep. And there's another sort of a pop-out little metal tabs here that you can use to um, attach an extra strap to go over the top of your head if you want to um, support the weight a little bit more that way. But we're not going to be using that anyway. And on the cable we have a little connected thing which is how you're going to access the menus. And it just has a four-way joystick kind of a, or a D-pad I guess, a button in the middle and a plus and a minus. And this is going to go into the brick to control it. Now the brick, oh we've got some more of this foam here, that's great. Lots of this foam, I like it. So this um, is quite sticky, so I'm just going to try and not to touch that too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's this? Okay, there's a cloth there, I guess, maybe for cleaning the screens, the lenses or something? Not sure. Um, so this this thing here, I, I watched a teardown video of this, which I'll put a link to in the description. And the guy that did a teardown of this seems to be very clued up on how all this stuff works. And he was going over the, the internals of this and also the internals of everything that's in here. He pulls all this apart and looks at all how, how the lenses work and everything. So that was a quite an interesting video I found, and um, I watched that while I was waiting for this to arrive. But basically, it's um, it's like a little computer in here, and it's going to take these inputs here, either VGA 
or the composite input and put pump those out into a format that the goggles can understand from this plug there. And unfortunately you can't get rid of this. You, you need to have this with you. It's not as heavy as I thought. And interestingly we have some USB plugs here as well. So another way you can use the goggles is you can put some media like a movie or something onto the onto a USB flash drive and plug that in there and watch your movie from your flash drive. And also an, quite an important point for, for us or for me is that this will provide 5 volt power as well. So you could use that 5 volt power there to power your um, possibly your DVR or your video receiver which is what I'm thinking to try it with. And there's another little USB mini B or whatever that um, plug type is called there on the right. I'm not, not really sure what that is. But yeah you can see it's it's all nice and sticky there can't you? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, and then there's just the one power button on the top and there must be a um, there must be a um, Oh, there it is there. And over there we have that 12 volt DC input socket on there. Gosh, now my fingers are all sticky. And there's also a flash drive in here which I couldn't quite get out before and I still can't get it out. But from what I saw on RC Groups, this flash drive has some sample movies or something that you can just plug in to watch just to see how they look on your screen. Um, Okay, and some other things that would have a cam in the original kit without the FPV add-ons would be these things here. So there's some just some uh, headphones, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with some earbuds and some spare earpiece um, tips or whatever you call them. And then there is the plug that you can use to input the composite video there and that would be coming in from these ones so you could plug your FPV um, video receiver into here the yellow one should give you video signal into there and then there are a couple of pads extra for I think these are for in here so if you want to replace this one with a thicker one, there's two thicknesses of pads in there. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but there's a thick one and a thin one. So I guess you could just replace them if you didn't um, find them very comfortable. And then also there is also some um, documentation and a little startup guide and a user manual. So that that's, I'm assuming this is this stuff here is what would have come in the original kit years ago before they added this FPV stuff on. So let's have a look at what you get with the FPV add-ons. Just shift this out of the way. Uh, so you get this case and some little screws. So there's four little screws in there and they screw into the base like that and this gives you well, it gives you three things you get a belt clip there that you can use to put that on your belt and then you get these two um, what would you call them sockets or mount mounting brackets for the plugs that you're going to have to put in to the side of the brick and the idea is that you, when you plug the plug in there, you will use these little rubber circular straps and strap the plug in there so that it can't f fall out that way and it can't fall out that way. Um, so obviously that's just so that it doesn't inadvertently pull out while you're in the middle of flying. Uh, other than that, I guess it provides a little bit of protection maybe if you drop it or scrape it, but that's not, not really the main purpose of it. Um, so that's that. You also get a 
let's open this up, shall we? Let's see what this is. This is a battery protection board, and I think you can also use this to charge your battery as well. Uh, I might, I'll have to check on that, but at the very least, this lets you put a 2S LiPo inside the brick. So this, um, it, the, possibly one reason why it feels a bit lighter than I thought is because there's actually nothing in the bottom part of it there. There's a cavity that you can um, use to put a LiPo inside. And the little black piece there, I presume, is going to slot into something in the base of that cavity. And then you'll be able to use your LiPo to, to run the whole thing. So it'll be interesting to see how much battery time you can get with this. And hopefully we can charge through this as well. I'm not, I'm not sure if it does that actually, but I'll find out sooner or later. Let me focus on those chips. Maybe somebody can figure out. The smart people out there will probably already be able to tell me if this board will be able to charge the LiPo as well as just protect it. Anyway, uh, so that's that. And we have just a few other things that we can use. Actually, may, these, these might have come in the original kit as well, but they just, um, they're just some fancy looking um, fake carbon fiber sort of stickers that you can put on around the outside of the brick and onto the goggles. All right, and then we have this, which is, um, Actually, this is another reason that made me want to buy this kit because I've been using the Quantum version 1 goggles recently, or, well, <laughs> my whole FPV career so far, but they have a few problems, and one of them is that they sort of tend to slip down your face a bit, and another thing is that you can't um, just sort of shift them up onto your forehead very conveniently, like, you know, how you have a pair of sunglasses on and you just sort of move them up onto your forehead and hold them there for a bit. Um, the Quantum V1s don't do that very well. Uh, so I've been looking forward to trying some ski mask style goggles. Um, I don't really like the way the Fat Shark goggles have this sort of plastic cup that squashes into the the area around your eye socket. I, I just really like the way ski mask goggles do it with a, a larger area around the outside so that your eyes are much more relaxed in here. Um, and they also keep out sunlight very well too. So this is just a ski mask from which the um, glass or the plastic at the front has been removed and there's just nothing in there. And they're very comfortable actually. I found them to be very, very comfortable indeed. Um, and they're not going to be too loose, that's for sure, because I had to actually re um, move the positions of these straps to almost to the the largest it can get before it was um, comfortable for me so it's definitely not going to be slipping off um, and for those of you who are <coughs> skiers you may appreciate the extra little layer of felt that's on the outside here <coughs> if I can just focus on this bloody thing uh, you can't see it too well but it's not just a sponge pressing onto your skin you have actually a, a nice little bit of felt on the outside which makes all the difference really when you're wearing it for a long time. Um, only slight drawback with these I found is that they are very warm. I wore them just inside for just a few minutes and my face was already sort of warming up <clears throat> um, which will be fine in winter of course but um, in summer it might be a, a bit of a pain in the butt. Well they are, they are ski goggles after all. So anyway in the middle of the screen where the screen was there's this plastically uh, molded plastic piece and there's a few little um, indentations there which help you fit it into the right place and the shape of this would is just the same shape as the glass would have been in the in the front there um, so you just sort of slot it in here I'm, I'm trying not to touch it too much because I've got the sticky stuff on my fingers and I don't want to get this these goggles all sticky as well in fact I'll, I'll just do this later but um, Shall I do it now? I'll do it now. Um, it wasn't too hard. Just 
get it right. So I'm not sure if I've quite got it right, but I'm sure you get the idea. And then it just sits in there and there's a nice, perfectly shaped um, place to put the goggles in inside there. And presumably you're going to have to cut a hole to put the plug in one side. I'm not sure about that. Alright, so um, the last thing that was in the kit is this tire glue. And this is used to just make a perfect seal around the outside here. I found that it wasn't too bad really. I, I didn't really notice any light getting in as, as it was. But if you want to make it a bit more sturdy and permanent, you can use this as well. Um, and just by the way, um, when I placed my order for this kit, about probably about five minutes after I placed my order, I got an email from Range Video saying that they were sorry they didn't have any of this glue at the moment. So if I was happy to receive the kit without the glue, they could send it straight away. Otherwise, if I waited a few days, they could send it with the glue. So obviously I waited a few days, but um, I just thought I'd mention that because their customer service was really quite quite fast and really on the ball. So um, props to them for that. Right, so that's that's everything that was in the kit, I think. I'm gonna cover everything. Oh, um, there was also oh yeah, we saw those, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> plenty of those. Um, all right, so I'm gonna clean this up now and. Um, get all the gunky paint off it and then I'll put it together and turn it on and see what it looks like. Okay, there we go. It's all cleaned up now, looking much nicer after um, being rubbed with... Uh, I used methylated spirits, otherwise known as denatured alcohol, I think, in other parts of the world. Um, this thing here at first I thought I couldn't get it clean, but it turns out this is just actually a very nice grippy kind of a rubbery textured um, surface and a couple of things I noticed while I was doing it is that there is an audio jack in there and there's actually a little lock switch on there so that you can uh, stop yourself from bumping the switches while you're in the middle of watching something and there's a compact flash port on the side of the um, brick and there you might be able to see the loads and loads of pins inside so never going to use that, are we? <laughs> but it's there if you need it. Um, so yeah, it turned out all right. Um, seems to have little bits of white stuff in the corners there for some reason. Not really sure what that's from. And I took the back off of this to have a look at the battery cavity. So you just do that by pushing in there and pulling up. It's just a simple plastic tab that gets pushed in. And there's some more paint in there, but it's not sticky for some reason. It looks like it should be. It looks horrible, but <laughs> it doesn't. It's not sticky anyway. Um, and in the bottom there, you can see the power connection that um, they did sell a battery specifically for this, kind of like a cell phone battery, just slotted in there. But I guess they they're not going to try and sell that to you anymore now that they know everybody has lipos that they want to use. So this little thing is going to fit in there, in those little slots, and it fits in there very nicely. Once you get it aligned. Oh, and there's a couple of screws in there. You can probably see there and there. So to do this properly, you would take the screws out and screw them in over the top of this plate, but fits in there very nicely. Um, so as far as batteries go, you can fit uh, I think I saw in the video that this company makes, they used a 2-cell 2650 milliamp hour LiPo. So I might get something like that, but for now I'm just going to use a little one. Should be alright. Um, okay, so I think we can probably just put this back on and see if we can turn this on and get it to display something. Oh, I ruined my perfect finish. Got fingerprints on it. Oh, uh, yeah. As far as putting the goggles into here goes, um, 
I realized that I'm not going to be able to cut a hole in the side for the uh, cable to come out because that means that all of this stuff is going to have to go <laughs> through the hole that I cut if I was to do that. So that's not really such a clever idea. And I checked the video that the range video people make and they are just putting it in here like this so that the cable is going to be sticking out on top of the foam on the edge there. And at first I didn't like that idea, but I gave it a try and it's actually not too bad. You don't really notice it. So I'm just going to go with that, the way that they've done it. And I also noticed that when I put this in, I can just get it to go in. It's pretty tight, but on the other hand, once it's in there, it sits in there quite, quite firmly. Uh, and then I did notice a little bit of daylight coming in. Once you put that goggle in, it becomes a lot more rigid, so uh, there's a little bit less room to sort of, oh no, that's fine, yeah, that's fine, yeah. So when I try this on now, yeah, there's a little, I can see a little peep of light coming in from just below the nose there. So that glue, I guess I will use that glue after all to just to block up all the gaps and um, try and get a more repeatable result when I shove the goggles in because once you put them in there you can't actually reach in oh you can oh my mistake you can actually reach in to adjust the IPD and the um, focus on them but it's probably going to be a little bit awkward because you really want to be doing that while you are uh, while you're looking into the lenses right so you want to be holding it like that and moving these sliders to adjust it while you're looking at it. But I don't think you could do that if you were putting your finger in there like that. You wouldn't be able to look at it and hold it, hold it, hold your hand in front of your face at the same time. Anyway, let's, uh, let's plug all this in and see if we can get something displaying on the screen. And hopefully this webcam will be able to pick it up. Anyway, let's uh, let's give that a try. Okay, everything is plugged in now. Uh, everything just being the 12 volt power from the mains uh, adapter and this little plug here. This actually feels quite solidly connected already. It has little um, springy clip things in there that go click when you plug it in. Anyway, let's uh, push the power button and see what we get. So I'm, I'm seeing this for the first time as well and I'm looking through the webcam view myself so uh, this is not going to work out too well. Jeez, it's hard to get a... where is it? Oh, there we go. Alright, so this is going to be quite hard to do I think on, on camera but... Um, mm, yeah... Oh, there we go. Oh, jeez. All right, well, that's <laughs> that's what you get when you turn it on, and so you have to, to select which input you're going to be using. Uh, I'll just plug in the USB flash thingy that came with this, which I think has some kind of a movie on it, so let me just do that. Okay, I loaded up the video that came on the flash drive with this thing, but it was kind of boring it was just mountains and waterfalls and stuff so I put a video on that's a little bit more interesting this one here um, and keep in mind that I'm viewing this or you're viewing this through my webcam which has an autofocus which occasionally kicks in and, and doesn't focus quite as well as it should and I'm also having to position it just in the right place so that we get the picture without too much brightness in it so if I hold it here it sort of gets sort of gets washed out oh oh geez yeah this is this is really quite difficult to show you what now I've lost it all together oh there we go all right so <laughs> this yeah to be honest this is not really the kind of thing that you can convey very well through video you kind of have to just look at it yourself to really see really what you're getting um,
but it's a it's pretty good. It's definitely much better than what I'm used to. Um, possibly not quite as good as fat sharks. I'm not not sure. I haven't really used them for more than about you know 30 seconds or so to compare with. But from memory, it was um, pretty much like this. I tried somebody's Dominator HD. I think they were, and they were fairly similar to this. Um, so let's have a look at some other inputs. If I can just get this to hold on, stay there. Okay. Um, so we go left. No, we go up to look at the menu, and we can do main menu. Uh, so this is what I was saying about it being too bright. It's because the outside, the surroundings of the frame is dark so the middle is overly compensated to be bright so that's that's a little bit more like what it should look like there but what well, you don't have this problem when you're looking at it normally that's what I'm trying to say so anyway you can choose your sources there and if I choose uh, composite so this is the uh, FPV cam that I have set up behind me. And it looks like somebody sneaked in while I wasn't watching and messed up my room because it's all messy. Look at that. Stuff everywhere. So if I just try and hold this... <laughs> Sorry, this is, this is the best I can do, honestly. All right. Oh, shit. Okay. So now I have a hand there. And I'm just trying to get some um, feeling for how much lag there is in the video. And once again, it's not it's not white and washed out like this when you look at it in real life. It's only because the webcam is overly making it white in the middle of the screen. But I'm not really noticing much lag at the moment. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit, but... Yeah, there's a little bit, uh, but this firmware is not the best firmware for FPV from what I've read on the RC Group's forums. Um, so you can also, so when you're in this menu, you use left to go up a menu. And we can look at system settings. Diagnostics, is it? Um, post results. So this is this, like a little computer. <laughs> and versions is what we're looking at here. So this is using version 1.20. Um, and 1.18 apparently is the version that you want to use with these. So I'll have to figure out how to update the firmware that's running on this and see if we can reduce that lag a little bit. It wasn't terrible, but it's um, yeah, not not really what you want for flying FPV. But anyway, I don't think there's a whole lot more that I can um, show you uh, at the current time. So that's what we were just looking at there. It's very difficult to get it in the right place. Actually, that's not too bad. Yeah, I should have just done that maybe. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, so to get that working, I just had this. This is my video receiver coming in here to the composite plug in the back. And that's the flash drive that was playing the movie. So everything seems to be working just nicely. Um, so I think I'll just leave this video here for now and I'll use this for a couple of weeks or so and see how it goes and probably make another video in the near future giving my thoughts and um, impressions on this after some real world usage. So thanks for watching and uh, come back and check the other video out later on. Oops, just one more thing. Uh, I thought I might just show you this page that's in the user manual because um, people might have questions about this, I think, and this should clear up quite a few things. So I'll just let you look at that for a second and you can pause the video if you want. Alright, finished now.